Okay, hey everyone. Uh, my name is Arnav Mitra. I am a program manager in the Fast Track team where I focus on endpoint technologies uh, like Config Manager, uh, MEM, Intune, uh, Autopilot. And in this session, I'd be talking about uh, Autopilot common issues. Uh, the goal is to discuss and review some of the uh, common scenarios that you would come across in day-to-day uh, -day, uh, experience with Autopilot if you have already started your journey or if you're planning to start with Autopilot, some of the things to uh, look out for and some best practices. Okay, so uh, uh, some of the scenarios as, as I talked about, uh, that I plan to discuss or some of the common issues uh, that you would see during autopilot is uh, autopilot branding. Uh, once uh, as an end user starts, uh, receives the device for performing an autopilot deployment or an admin prepares the device for autopilot, uh, branding is uh, an important thing where uh, you'd expect to see uh, the company logo uh, and uh, what I'm referring to is this box here with some branding. Instead of sign in with Microsoft, you expect your company logo to be there. Uh, issues around enrollment status page is, is something that admins come across a lot. Uh, thank you, Jason, for posting that. Uh, so in ESP or enrollment status page, as you hear a lot, is this page that you see on the screen in the picture, which has a different phases. There is a device phase, there is a, a preparation phase, and then there is a user phase for enrollment status page. And occasionally you might come across issues with uh, the whole enrollment status page where in one of the phases it failed to perform a specific task and uh, how to troubleshoot or look at and and then the associations with uh, the app failures uh, with one of these device phase or even pre-provisioning experience. So pre-provisioning is also known as the white glove experience where uh, as an admin you've configured a device for white glove where it goes through a technician portion and then for the end user experience of the deployment. So these are some of the very common scenarios where you go through autopilot and may potentially see experience, uh, potentially see or experience issues around uh, uh, around failures or you may need to troubleshoot. So recently I came across this uh, scenario or situation where I was uh, working with a customer who mentioned that uh, I'm not getting a consistent experience with autopilot. Uh, it's it's not uh, uh, a service I can rely on because sometimes it works great. Other times it does not work great. So after uh, some uh, deeper dive on the conversation to understand what's happening, what I realized uh, the customer said that uh, they have these autopilot deployment profiles and in the profiles of uh, sharing this window here in autopilot we have these deployment profiles so uh can have multiple different profiles depending on the scenario where you customize the out-of-box experience screen and uh one of the things uh that you have is a device name so you can specify a device name here like in my case i've specified az hyphen like a prefix and a random eight uh, numbers or characters uh, that would populate. So this this is something that was not working for the customer. They had uh, percent serial percent, but they were seeing desktop hyphen uh, computer name uh, or desktop hyphen random name after that, not what they were expecting. And sometimes it just works fine. So. Uh, so the first thing that came into mind, OK, is the device even going through an autopilot uh, scenario or the autopilot experience or not? So typically what we do is, OK, we need to look into the logs and get into deeper dive troubleshooting. Uh, but the first thing here I'd recommend, uh, I see Jason that came across the scenario recently. Uh, there is this autopilot deployment report. It's in preview. And it's pretty awesome. So the first thing 
we did in this scenario was, OK, did the, the device even go through an autopilot experience? So um, this uh, report only keeps data for 30 days, so that's something to look for. Uh, but, the, but the good thing is you can uh, search it by device name, uh, serial number, autopilot profile. So the first thing we did was we searched for the device name. Uh, whatever it had like desktop hyphen. So they had like 50 or 100 devices with desktop hyphen. So we just literally searched for desktop hyphen and there were none devices. So what does that mean? So, uh, the device didn't even go through the autopilot experience. They might uh, have gone through the irregular out of box experience where they didn't go through any autopilot customization or configuration. And that that's the whole reason. Uh, they started seeing the problem. So uh, this is the first report, pretty handy. Uh, you can see information around the enrollment date, when it started, uh, what kind of uh, enrollment you're doing, the device serial number, name, and also the autopilot profile. And another cool thing is deployment time. If if you come across scenarios where you're seeing, OK, I have sometimes autopilot taking 50 minutes and 20 minutes, you can start uh, digging into it uh, if it's specific to a model uh, or a device type or a deployment profile. Maybe hybrid devices are taking longer because they have to do hybrid join. They have to wait for the device registration record to synchronize up into the cloud versus an autopilot. So it can also set up some baseline uh, on how how long the whole process takes. Are you deploying way too many apps as required apps? Or uh, or could be another scenario. So uh, that, that could be a handy report to start with. So in, in this case, going back where the customer said, OK, uh, I, I was uh, getting desktop hyphen instead of uh, the expected computer name. And we do not see the uh, devices in that previous report. Uh, from the previous slide. So what next? How do we troubleshoot? And this is where uh, the fun starts, where we start to capture or gather the logs. Uh, typically, the expectation is, OK, let's try to reproduce uh, the issue. And uh, when you get into that out of box experience, you do uh, or run the MDM diagnostic tool uh, with this command line uh, and then capture the log file and then someone uh, starts to review uh, the log file. Now, two things can happen here. Once uh, if we capture the log file, if we ask the customer to, so let's try it again and uh, capture the log files. It's possible that the next time they uh, reset the device, they may see the actual autopilot experience and things work. In that case, the customer probably would not have uh, very confidence on autopilot service, probably because uh, last time it did not work and they retried it and it worked. And this is where we want to bring some more clarity to uh, capture logs uh, even out of, uh, even after uh, the fact a device has gone through the out of box experience. So uh, as admins, when you have these devices where you're troubleshooting, you can always capture the logs even post uh, the out of box experience when the device is full uh, OS in, in the previous case, like it was in, uh, they had a lot of devices uh, with desktop hyphen. So uh, under settings access worker school, you can do this export uh, your management file, uh, management log file, which will generate this cap. Uh, this is a little different from uh, the MDM diagnostic report, which you capture from uh, settings, account, and uh, access worker school. So uh, what I am uh, recommending here is this export your management log file. Uh, typically, uh, you may go to info, and under info, you click on generate report or create report. This generates just the HTML report. That's not helpful. Uh, what we are looking for is more logs. So when you click on this export your management log files, it will uh, create a log file, uh, which is this MDM uh, diag file under users, the same place you get, uh, you look for that HTML file. 
uh, under diagnostic and this is where you get the cap file uh, all the uh, important relevant data so uh, going back to the slide here so the the point is even after the os you can capture the log file now there could be a scenario where uh, the admin may not have access to the, de the desktop. OK, uh, something went wrong during autopilot, but they just gave the desktop or laptop to the end user and the end user is have started using the device. Now, what do we do? We pick a new device and again, start troubleshooting and hopefully a problem occurs and we troubleshoot. Or what you can do is uh, we introduce this collect diagnostics uh, option in uh, in the mem console. So uh, un, un, under your device, you uh, uh, you select this collect diagnostics, and when you collect it, it says uh, it will capture the diagnostic data and put it in the device diagnostic, uh, which is uh, here on the right side. Uh, which will tell you who captured it and whether it's complete. It waits for 24 hours. So with the expectation that the device has been online the last 24 hours before the uh, service expires, it captures the log and uh, then you can download that information. And thank you, Jason, for putting all these uh, uh, docs link. So I'll, I'll I'll click on this uh, collect diagnostic. So uh, the collect diagnostic has this task where it captures the MDM diagnostic uh, log file task 17 and under folder 45, uh, you would uh, look into it. So uh, I'll quickly run down through this collect diagnostic. Uh, one of the key features or uh, key things to look for is the requirement. So if you are going through this collect diagnostic route, make sure uh, the device is at least 1909 or higher. Anything lower would not uh, capture the logs. And then uh, permissions it talks about. And, and then uh, going back to the slide task 17. So yeah, task 17 is the one which runs the MDM diagnostic tool. That's the command. It also captures other uh, whole lot of good information that can be uh, useful for troubleshooting and then uh, folder 45 has the MDM uh, log file with the cab extension which has that same uh, set of log files. Uh, something to also look for is the known issues with device diagnostic. Uh, it's possible a timeout can occur uh, on uh, devices. Uh, there is KB fix for these so if uh, you're experiencing issues with uh, capturing these remote logs, make sure uh, the device have uh, these two patches. So uh, now that you have collected the logs, we talked about three different ways. You can do it from out of box experience if you have the device, or you can remotely capture uh, the log files. Uh, how? Wh what next? We looked into uh, one of uh, the cap files here. It has uh, around 43 items and uh, we'll, we'll have to review uh, the logs that that can be daunting. So uh, going back to the slide. So there is this uh, PowerShell commandlet get hyphen autopilot diagnostics. Uh, you can download it. Uh, the cool thing is uh, you can actually run it on your machine. Uh, like as an admin, as a technician, uh, we can download uh, the script on our machine, install hyphen script, uh, get hyphen autopilot diagnostics and ask for the end user or as an admin, we can download the log files. It does not have to be run on that machine which is experiencing the issue. So uh, there is an extent, uh, there is a uh, command line uh, switch uh, where you uh, type in get hyphen autopilot diagnostics hyphen cap file and you give the path to the cap file. That way, uh, all you need is cap file from whichever machine you have and uh, you, you review it in your machine, in your pace, in your convenience. So uh, uh, going back to that example where uh, 
we were troubleshooting on this desktop hyphen machine, which did not go through the autopilot experience, we captured the log file. So uh, here, as you can see, uh, zoom in a bit. Uh, we put that, uh, we put the uh, extension hyphen cab file captured uh, or and and then gave the location of the cab file. Uh, it, it just fit one line autopilot diagnostic. This is not an autopilot device. So that itself uh, gave uh, uh, like a, a confirmation after looking in the report we previously looked at where we looked for our desktop hyphen. It did not have run through or gone through the whole autopilot experience. Uh, another thing that you will notice is uh, uh, like if you are into logs, uh, there is this autopilot DD S uh, JSON file, which has the autopilot configuration file. This would be very likely missing. So if you want to run or capture the cab file from settings app in your machine, if it has not gone through autopilot experience and, and then run this PowerShell command, uh, it's very likely that you will get the same uh, experience that it is not an autopilot device unless it is an autopilot device and uh, you get uh, to see the whole experience. So uh, that that again helps understanding, OK, if a device have even gone through autopilot, if it, if it even makes sense to go deeper uh, into it. Uh, but then uh, if a device have gone through an autopilot experience, uh, like you see here on, on the right side, uh, you will start seeing more information uh, about the whole autopilot diagnostic. You will see your tenant domain, uh, tenant ID. That can be helpful if uh, uh, at times uh, you may have a, a lab tenant and then a production tenant. It's possible that uh, you may have registered the device to a wrong tenant and you're expecting uh, a different profile. So, so that can be helpful, tenant domain and tenant ID. And then you start seeing the whole out of box experience uh, configuration here. Like, uh, uh, excuse me, like everything that you have configured in the autopilot uh, out of box uh, profile config, whether you want to skip uh, the keyboard, uh, whether you have configured or chosen a profile which requires TPM, which is which could be the pre-provisioning scenarios, uh, whether you're skipping EULA, uh, so all of good information, and then also information about the ESP page. So this all this is also helpful if, say, I don't have access to uh, the tenant, and I am interested to see uh, how is the ESP configured. Uh, whether the device ESP is enabled or user ESP is disabled, what's the timeout, whether we are blocking. Um, and then it starts giving a breakout of uh, the ESP, uh, what, what happened during the device ESP, user ESP, and then uh, a final summary as observed timeline. And this is where you'll get uh, the whole uh, summary of what happened, profile download, if a profile download does not happen, the device is very likely not going to go through out of box experience. And uh, from there, it starts the MDM enrollment. Uh, then it goes through Sidecar with into management extension and installs the apps. Here we've got Office and a Win32 app. Uh, now for Win32 app, uh, we only provide the app GUID. So, uh, this can be difficult to understand what is the file name, and this is where you do a deeper dive. You start looking into the Intune management extension uh, logs to copy the squid and just do a find for uh, that log file. Uh, you will find that log file in that MDM diagnostic cap. So uh, again, here's the extension log file. So you just uh, open it and uh, copy or look for the GUID. If you if you have config manager trace, you can use that and uh, copy and and find for that log file. Uh, what app app that is? So uh, this is uh, an example here. Uh, I'll also pull out one from a customer. Uh, recently, we looked at. Uh, autopilot diagnostics, uh, we got the tenant info. Uh, here, something interesting here, uh, the scenario we are going through is a hybrid Azure AD join uh, scenario. Uh, 
and uh, we've got more information about whether uh, offline domain join policy is applied. Uh, skip connectivity check is for hybrid scenarios where uh, you are doing a domain join uh, outside the corporate network using VPN. That's a skip connectivity check. And then uh, device ESP, user ESP is enabled. Uh, so an interesting thing here, ESP timeout, uh, 1440. So uh, what they did, uh, they just bumped it up to 24 hours uh, and uh, put, put the maximum they could. And then uh, the ESP blocking. So here you'll see more information about uh, all everything that happened during device ESP. There is a bunch of apps that got installed and then in observed timeline, uh, you will get more details about uh, what happened. The profile downloaded, uh, ODJ blob applied, and then for each of the app, it will say whether it's downloading and if it failed during downloading and whether if it installed uh, the app successfully. So we, we go through this whole experience. Uh, Johannes have mentioned we can also use the online parameter. Yes, uh, that's right. You can uh, absolutely do do that to get the apps. Uh, that's uh, that's actually a good point. Uh, it will be good if you are using it on the same tenant and on the device. That way, it will uh, do it at runtime. Uh, however, if it is something you're troubleshooting. Uh, outside of the device and not on the same tenant, then online uh, you won't be able to resolve the names. But yes, a good tip uh, there to add the online switch. OK, so uh, what happens next? Uh, sometimes uh, everything looks good and uh, you are still experiencing some issues around uh, deployment. So this is where you start to decipher the logs. Uh, now, which logs to look at? Uh, Michael Niehaus uh, got a good uh, blog post for, for this, uh, where he talked about uh, what files to look at. Uh, and uh, yeah, another thank you, Jelly, for posting the autopilot diagnostic uh, Michael Niehaus has uh, posted a couple of uh, really nice uh, posts for these uh, where you will get information about which files are important to look for. Like we saw, there are 43 files, but what are the things to look for would be uh, whether the JSON file uh, is there for downloaded. Now, if you're troubleshooting for uh, domain join issues, then you'll probably be uh, looking into this one, modern deployment, if you're troubleshooting MDM enrollment, uh, then this is something you'll be looking for. So the ones which are high uh, in terms of usefulness is what you'll start looking into uh, the log uh, files. So as, as you troubleshoot, uh, there, there are some good to know links. Uh, Jason uh, already posted uh, some of these, uh, or probably all of them. I saw a lot of links. Yeah, he posted there. Uh, so the important one I like to always keep in reference is the understand the ESP status. It has uh, pretty much everything. It talks about what happens during ESP. Uh, what's really helpful is the section around uh, the troubleshooting where we go into uh, the registry. So here it talks about where you will find information about whether the device profile got downloaded, and then also information around sidecars. So if you're troubleshooting an app didn't install, and uh, let's say you do not have the online switch availability, or you just want to look directly from the registry what happened, you will start expanding these and you will identify uh, the Win32 app. And uh, then again, Intune Management Extension Log will be a friend which will tell you what happened. And then uh, there are also status uh, like one not installed, not required, completed, or error. So one is not installed here uh, for a specific app. And uh, then you can start looking into that specific Intune Management Extension Log, what happened if it failed during download or failed during uh, installation. So this this is one handy uh, blog post or docs link uh, that is uh, very helpful. 
I, I keep that in in my favorites. I'll share this uh, deck as well. Uh, and then uh, ESP known issues is another important one, and the resolved issues uh, as well. Uh, this this can be helpful in a, di a lot of different scenarios where uh, uh, it could be specific to an operating system, how it behaves uh, for uh, 1903 or higher, or before 1903, uh, what happens if you are doing a domain join? It takes 40 minutes longer because it tries to sync the hybrid uh, AD connector uh, as the device sync. And, uh, and so these these are some of the known issues. Uh, so really helpful uh, instead of spending hours and hours for troubleshooting. Uh, this is good. Uh, Windows Autopilot uh, known issues is something you should also look at. And then uh, there's policy conflict. Uh, this is also great uh, as we create, uh, love to deploy these uh, policies. Uh, some of them can be conflicting like app locker device restriction. A uh, very common one that I've started seeing is uh, uh, we recommend these security baselines to be deployed, but then they end up in adding these administrator elevation prompts. If you are not a local admin on the box or the end user is not local admin and you try to configure, manage, or customize some of these changes, uh, this will be, uh, this could be something uh, to know about. Uh, so again, another, helpful link. And then uh, another important one is the Win32 app flow. Uh, a lot of failures during ESP happens during uh, the time of uh, Win32 application install. So uh, this workflow will tell you what happens step by step, what happens. Uh, the first we check for prerequisites, then we download, uh, for, then we extract the package, download and install the package. So this uh, this is a very good docs link, talks about the whole process and uh, all the logs uh, that's going to tell you uh, each and every single detail. So another uh, item to keep handy. So what's Microsoft doing to make this experience better instead of manually looking through all of these? Uh, we've introduced this diagnostic page in Windows 11. Uh, uh, thank you, Christopher, for posting this. Uh, uh, you can press this Control Shift D uh, that will bring in this autopilot diagnostic page if things uh, goes out during installation of an app and uh, you see a failure uh, by invoking this command, you will uh, identify, you will uh, not uh, see this autopilot diagnostic page uh, with the scroll bar uh, at the state where it failed with the warning sign. Pretty, pretty cool uh, things uh, to see and, and then saves a lot of time for uh, scenarios where a specific app failed. It will tell you the app name and uh, you'll spend less time diagnosing the log versus uh, just this page. So um, again, uh, it, it is in the diagnostic page. Uh, I have it in the uh, in the deck. I hope someone have also pasted in the chat. So moving next, uh, ESP facts. Uh, there is uh, a lot of uh, confusion around uh, what should be the timeout values, or how should we configure ESP. I um, I showed you one of these uh, ESP. Uh, this uh, diagnostic response from uh, our customer and they have set this ESP timeout to 1440, which is 24 hours because they just don't want to see any timeout. So uh, here, uh, as you can see, the ESP uh, uh, that you have configured uh, for provisioning the policies for device ESP and user ESP is separate. So if you specify 60 minutes as in this example, it is not the total time. We give the 60 minutes for device ESP and uh, 60 minutes for the user ESP. So you do not really need to increase uh, the time there. Additionally, uh, we talked about hybrid AADJ in one of the docs link that it's not asking you to increase the 40 minute timeout if you are doing hybrid join. That is a separate timeout that is considered in the backend. 
So you can uh, still have that 60 minute configuration in the ESP and uh, still have uh, and still can do hyper dash AD join. Although uh, we strongly, strongly recommend to choose Azure AD join if you're deploying new devices anyways. But if you still ended up in a hybrid AG, ADJ scenario, you really do not need to increase uh, the timeout for the sake of hyper dash AD join. And then finally, uh, clicking try again, uh, it just resets uh, the timer configured uh, for for that total timeout. Uh, it's not uh, going to reinstall the app. It is just adding the timeout and may just end up with another timeout. So uh, some important uh, ESP facts to call out. All right, uh, next uh, for pre-provisioning or white glove, uh, there is this uh, flow chart uh, which talks about that uh, when we do uh, the pre-provisioning, uh, the device ESP phase runs, then uh, it goes to reseal and then we go to start. Uh, this is from the deployment poster. Uh, I'll uh, copy paste that in the chart, but the important message here is uh, uh, what is uh, probably not known out is uh, we also installed the user assigned uh, apps. So if you're doing a white glove and there are certain apps that are installed or targeted to the user, they are actually installed during <coughs> the post after the device ESP, but they are just hidden uh, from the technician view. Uh, I think uh, Jason, you just posted. Yeah, the point posters. Uh, let me click on it. Yes, so uh, thank you. Uh, so this, these are really good deployment posters. When you click on it, it will take you to another link. I didn't want to post this one because it changes each time. So here we talk about the whole uh, autopilot deployment process, what happens uh, for each different phase if you're doing self-deploying. So the screenshot I had in the PPT uh, is from uh, the self-deploying where it says we do the device ESP with an asterisk and uh, then from there we expect to see the user ESP, which, which is true, but then uh, that could be for uh, other scenarios, but the apps that are installed, they are actually, that actually happens before the reseal. So when the end user signs in for uh, the white glove experience, they see significantly shorter time, especially when you are deploying uh, multiple apps, like in this example. So all of these apps, let's say they were targeted to user, they would be already installed during the technician time and the experience would be much more faster comparatively. Okay, uh, another uh, area where we see issues is around uh, installing the store apps. So, uh, let's say you're deploying the company portal app and uh, you've targeted it to device or user ESP. It may, for user ESP, it may very likely end up, uh, it will end up in a timeout and in a device ESP, it may not install. And if it's a blocking app, you may see a failure. If it is a not blocking app, you may not see the app unless uh, the end user have signed in later and then it will install. So what we recommend strongly is uh, to target or deploy uh, the offline apps. And uh, there is a misconception that these offline apps do not uh, upgrade. If you deploy offline app, you're, you're doing side loading and you need to uh, install or always upgrade the uh, store app. That's not the case. They will automatically upgrade. So uh, the recommendation is choose the, um, in this example, company portal. Uh, you will get this drop down. If you do not get this drop down, make sure under settings you enable the offline apps uh, experience or the toggle. And uh, once you have that toggle on, you will see the drop down. It's pretty much for all apps. Uh, some of the apps are only online. So uh, if that's the case, 
then you may not want it to uh, block that offline app as a blocker or blocking app in your ESP so that it can install safely later. And um, as, as, as I was talking about the offline app and uh, the ESP timeout, uh, one of the links uh, from uh, uh, the previous slide, uh, the, the, good, the good to know is about uh, do not install the uh, MSI or do not mix the MSI and Win32 apps together because uh, we cannot use uh, the same installer for targeting both the apps. It locks the installer. It's all there in the docs. You will find it in uh, the known issues uh, for ESP uh, and in other links as best practices and frequently asked questions. And uh, since we are in this uh, page for ESP timeout, uh, uh, Store for Business is retiring in the first quarter of 2023. Uh, there is this blog post uh, which calls out uh, what's the next steps. Uh, use Windows Package Manager, uh, use uh, MEM, uh, Intune Config Manager, and uh, Company Portal for deploying. Uh, in the recent Ignite, there was this session. Uh, pasted the link uh, as well here. Uh, uh, for delivering uh, apps in the enterprise, uh, you will hear what are, what's our recommendation post uh, the retirement of Store for Business. Um, Jelly, you got a question. Do you mean LOB apps, MSI, and Win32 apps? Yes, yeah, that is exactly right. And uh, I think it is in the ESP uh, known issues docs uh, because of the trusted installer. Yeah, but but yes, your understanding is right. Do you have like an additional question or you want to know more details about it? Yeah, it's here. Trusted installer one. Yeah, thanks, Jason, for copying it. OK, cool. All right, going back to the slide. Hey, and yeah, do watch this session uh, which talks uh, more about the uh, uh, new experience for Store for Business. OK, uh, moving next, five more minutes. OK, so uh, recently there has been a lot of changes around autopilot and uh, it, things stopped working for uh, our customers, many organizations were impacted. So uh, why some of these changes uh, were made is listed on this public blog post uh, where we talk about uh, uh, the changes here, MFA changes, we are no longer retaining uh, the MFA uh, claim and uh, after a reboot, the user will need to sign in and go through the MFA experience. So uh, that that's one of the change, uh, user assignment change. So uh, we post these uh, uh, changes in the uh, message center post. Uh, uh, this this also uh, reminds me of uh, a lot of time when you're troubleshooting autopilot. Uh, recently, you guys have uh, seen uh, like in Twitter or in other social media that there was an issue with autopilot backend and people were trying to do a certain type of deployment and it was failing because the problem was really from the Microsoft end because of a backend service was down or uh, something wasn't working. So we typically post them in the message center post uh, which you can find under tenant administration. So sometimes if you are experiencing uh, an issue which uh, uh, which has always been working in the past, it's good to go under service health and uh, under service health, you will find uh, these advisories. Some of these advisories are tenant specific or it could be specific to a sp Azure scale unit. 
uh, Intune is uh, a cloud-based service. It's a software as a service. So not every tenant in the world may be impacted. It could be a specific tenant in a specific corner of the world uh, where it's impacted. Sometimes I've seen it is only for a specific tenant who is being impacted. We post these. So. Uh, uh, it's. I understand it's always not possible for admins to actually go through here and understand. Uh, what I recommend is to uh, notify themselves via emails. That can be uh, something uh, you can configure. I've clicked on the C past uh, advisory, so it takes me to admin center. And under admin center, uh, under preferences. Uh, you can, uh, by default, it shows all type of advisories from all different M365 suite of services, but then you can choose your preferences to only view specific one or even email you for a specific type of uh, incident or advisories, and then you can get yourself notified. So this, this may help you in troubleshooting or stay up to date at times uh, to be aware of what's happening. Uh, around. Um, so yeah, the user assignment was also related with autopilot. Uh, if you look for this uh, post in the admin center, uh, it is about uh, the pre-provisioning, which is similar to this uh, article uh, about uh, self cell deployment and pre-provisioning. Um, this was a scenario where if you're doing self uh, if you're doing a pre-provisioning scenario or kiosk scenario and you want to reuse the device, now you have to delete the autopilot device uh, record from Intune. You do not need to delete it from the autopilot uh, hardware hash. So what, what I mean is you do not need to delete the record from here. You only delete the record uh, uh, from here under devices uh, that that has been the change. If you want to, if you want to do the pre-provisioning reset scenario or redeploy, uh, uh, then there was another issue around uh, TPM attestation uh, for uh, specific uh, Tiger Lake devices. There is a hotfix scheduled. Uh, I'm not aware if it is already released. Uh, there's a public docs link. I'll I'll send this, and then. Uh, for Windows 11, we introduced the diagnostic page I already talked about. And and finally, uh, this is my last slide here. Uh, in case you missed, some of these announcements were posted during the Ignite time. Uh, what's coming up is App Supersedence for Win32 app, a really cool capability to chain or daisy chain the apps, uh, which is a limitation today. So that's coming. Uh, you can do these uh, gradual rollouts for feature updates, which means you can specify the percentage of devices, uh, how it will gradually increase. Something that you have already have capability in Config Manager is coming out. Uh, you can define the co-management authority uh, during an installation. Uh, so today with Autopilot, it's not recommended to deploy the Config Manager agent because the device may get into an island state uh, for hybrid devices. So now you'd be able to define uh, who would be the authority uh, of uh, the co-management. And then Autopilot is coming for Surface Hub and uh, ESP filters are also coming up uh, in, in later time. So these are in development. Uh, you may also see uh, these listed in uh, the in development. Uh, page pretty soon. So that is all I had. Uh, uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I'll go to the chat here. Uh, I see Jelly have pasted uh, a link, a Reddit post. Okay, about the Intel. Tiger Lake, let me look into docs. I'm not uh, up to speed about what's happening with the Tiger Lake. It's only supported on 21H2 or higher. So are you testing it on 21H2 or higher? 
I understand uh, a fix is scheduled for uh, lower devices. Oh, so you're on the EMD. Oh, I, I missed that. Probably it's the it's the fix that would uh, the hot fix that would resolve. I am really not up to speed on this. Uh, uh, Jason side, if you if you have more info around it, feel free to chime in. No, actually, I do not have any more information about that. We'll, we'll definitely look into this and maybe when we post the session, we will post uh, something uh, with the session for that. Sounds good, and I, I like uh, Christopher uh, comment about opening a ticket uh, would be the best route to go. Uh, Arnab, if you please be kind and send me the the deck for for the PowerPoint presentation, and I'll sure. try to post that with the with the session. Thank you. Absolutely, I'll do that. And that was my intent for all the URLs I posted um, are embedded in the in the chat, so it's it's easy to follow along and just click on the link. So I'll definitely do that. Thank you. All right, am, am I missing any questions? OK, uh, this is one. Have you seen issues with multiple ESP policies with the highest priority ESP does not apply? Uh, I know that we are introducing the, uh, the ESP filters for applying, uh, but I'm not aware of an issue uh, where the highest priority have not applied. Have you opened the ticket? Okay, great. Uh, not that uh, any Thing that is known. Uh, once again, uh, the known issues would probably be something to look for if multiple uh, customers are seeing uh, this issue. We put it on active incidents uh, or advisories uh, if if the engineering team is aware of something happening in the back end. Awesome. Ernab, thank you so much. Definitely, there is a lot of in-depth uh, information here. We definitely appreciate that. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording.